Hi guys, this is Sophie. Sophie is half Havanese and half Bichon, and we're gonna give her a cute teddy bear haircut today. So let's get busy. The first thing we're going to do is wash and blow dry Sophie. I will be using I Groom Prebiotic Shampoo and Conditioner. Without a proper bath and blow dry, it is impossible to do beautiful scissor work. It is impossible to get a truly even haircut. The foundation for all good haircuts is the bath and blow dry. After the dog is rinsed, I use a good quality ear cleansing solution to dry up any water that might have gotten into the ears, to loosen up debris, and to remove earwax. I fill up each ear canal with the ear cleansing solution and allow the dog to shake its head. After the bath, I wrap the dog up in a nice warm towel and head off to the drying table. Sophie does not like her nails being trimmed. I've been finding that a lot of dogs do much better if I lay them upside down for the nail trimming. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. Good girl. To lay the dog upside down, just take a second and scratch the dog's chest before you start clipping the nails or the feet. That's a good puppy. If they start to get restless, just stop and scratch the chest again. Good girl. That's very nice. Stay. Good puppy. While she's in this position, I will use a Maca Art nail file. This is a 100, 180 grit nail file. Good girl. That's very nice. Yeah. That's very, very nice.
to do the back nails, I do have them get up. Whenever they're in this position, I always give them a release word before I let them get up. On my house and in my salon, I typically use the word, okay, good girl. To do her back nails, I'm going to support her body, hold her foot backwards like this, supporting her knee with my arm. Trim the nails from here. Good girl. Now I'm going to mist her all over with the Artero mix. And using the fine tooth comb, I'm gonna comb all her hair up and out, making sure that we don't have any tangles or snags, making sure everything is properly brushed. And speaking of brushing, every time you wash your dog, especially with a coat like this, you need to brush and comb the dog from one end of the body to the other the same day as the bath. If you have a dog like this, and you wash it one day and you go to brush it the next, it's going to be very, very matted. If you let it go two days, it will probably have to be shaved down. That's how critical the same day brushing and combing is. And speaking of brushing and combing, you want to be sure that you get all the way to the skin all over the dog. It's best to have your dog up on a surface when you go to brush and comb their hair and use something non-slip under them. I am using a palm mat for her. That way you can see the legs and you can comb the legs and you can comb up under the dog very easily. If the dog is just in your lap, there's a very good likelihood that you will miss large portions of the brushing and combing. So the comb snagged in her hair here in the tail, and you saw me pick up the brush and pick at it. You never want to pull mats out with the comb. You always want to take your brush, pick it out, and then go back with the comb and check. So right here, the comb is snagging. See how she's unhappy about that? If I pulled that through and tried to yank out that little knot, she would be very unhappy with me. So I'm picking up my brush, pick, 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 and combing. Until you learn the art of maintaining the coat, you can never expect to have a fluffy haircut like this on your dog. And maintaining coat is truly an art. All right, so we're going to start her clipping. Using my three and three quarter blade, I'm going to clip from about three fingers past the point of the skull down. I'm going to start there and clip all the way down to just in front of the tail. Point to round down around the rib cage. Skin down over the shoulders, coming just up behind the ears here. Blending down into the longer hair. Good girl. Good 
coming down over the chest, all the way up under the dog. Good girl. Let's turn. Good girl. Turn, 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 turn. Good puppy. Going to repeat the whole process on the other side of the dog. Skimming down over her back end here. Lifting up the ear again. Skimming down over the shoulder, blending into the longer hair on the legs. Now we're going to brush all this out and do the whole thing again. That will lift up and out any pieces of hair that we've missed and make sure that our clip is nice and even. So for Sophia, I do not cut in too much angulation. I try to keep her back legs quite big, quite straight. Under her tail and for her belly, I am using the 7F blade on the Schoenbau Digital Clipper. This blade is very safe on this style of clipper. Regular 7F blades on snap-on style clippers are not as safe as this one. I like this blade because it leaves just a little bit more hair than a tin blade, preventing any irritation from sensitivity in these tender areas. Take care. Next, I'm using a 4F blade on the underside of the dog. It's okay. Going to lift her up and trim the underside against the grain all the way up to the elbows. Going to lightly skim with this blade inside the back legs. Good girl. I know. I feel mad at me. Huh? I feel mad at me, so. All right. I'm going to use my three and three quarter blade on the ears from about the bend of the ear down towards the end of the ear, going straight down the middle of the ear all the way to the end, center down, center out, center out, and this is only on the outside of the ear, center down, center out, center out. For the inside of the ear, I'm going to use a 5F blade. This is going to make her ears really lightweight and help them to sit up high. For the pads of the feet, I'm going to use the Heininger Opal Clipper with a 40 blade.
You notice how I use my arms to steady the dog, brace the dog, help the dog to feel secure and safe on her feet. Around the eyes, I'm going to use a Artero Spectra Clipper with a 10 blade. And I'm just going to take the corners of the eyes. Now using my Artero Fusion Curvy Shears, I'm going to brush all the hair down around the feet. And anything that falls below the pads, I will be trimming off, being very careful not to nick the pads with the shears. I will repeat this on all four feet. With the feet firmly on the table, I'm going to brush all the hair out around the feet and scissor those around. You're all right. It's okay, Miss Susanna's got you. Using my fine tooth comb, I'm gonna comb the hair up and out. And with my Zolita Mirage straight shears, I'm going to scissor the longer hair on the legs and blend it into the shorter hair on the back. I am curving the back leg up to the highest point underneath, which is just behind the last rib. Again, I am not giving her a lot of curve or angulation on the back of the back leg on purpose because I want a fuller, straighter looking leg on her. I am leaving extra hair on the back of the front leg to shorten the length of her back. Doing a little windshield wiper motion here to create this indent right in front of the back leg, give it a nice natural look. 
on the inside of the leg. He's a good girl. He is a very, very good girl, yes, he is. Comb this side up and out. Pet parents have been doing a fabulous job keeping her brushed and combed. Good girl. Stay this one. Again, doing our little windshield wiper. Get out them. If they move away from where you want them, just pick them up and put them right back again. Yes, I love you. I do. You know I do. Now I'm going to brush the whole body out again. Mess up all of this beautiful combing and scissoring. Because this kind of hair is thick, silky, soft, and very difficult to scissor, honestly, because of its softness. So by combing and brushing it all again after I've scissored it, it'll bring up and out all these pieces that I've missed. And I can just go back over that and scissor it all one more time. Good girl, wait. When you think of a real teddy bear, it has big fat legs that are fat all the way down to the paws, short round ears, a rounded face, and it's very plush. So when I think teddy bear trim, that's what I am trying to transfer onto the dog. Big fat legs, big fat feet, cute round muzzle, a rounded head, and little rounded ears. All right, to get started on this face, I'm going to use a Chris Christensen butter comb number 006. This is a face comb, and I'm going to comb this muzzle hair up and back. I do not do a super short chin on her like what you would see with a fusion style trim because of the length of her body and the style of build that she has, the size of her head, none of that works with a super short chin. So I'm going to round the chin 
a medium length and round it up into a circle. These are my Fusion Curvy Shears from Artero. I'm trying to separate the muzzle from the cheeks and both will be round. It's two layers of roundness. Switching to my Utsumi comb. As you can see, she's a bit challenging on the face because she does twist her head. going to use my Masuta Curve Chunkers made by V3 on the skull. I don't want this super long or fluffy. I'm not trying to make her look like a Bichon. And taking it a bit shorter does help the ears to pop. Creating this outer circle. I try to teach the dogs I work on to lay their head in my hand. Doesn't always work, but I try. And you might say, well, if you held on to her beard hair, you'd have a bit better hold on that head. And yeah, I would, but I'd also have more resistance with her pulling backwards. I don't like to hold on to their beard hair. I like to train them to lay their head in my hand. I'm going to hold the ear up, flip it backwards, and this hair right in front of the ear, I'm going to trim close. Because I want separation between the cheeks and the ear, just like I want separation between the muzzle and the cheeks. Repeat the other side in front of the ear. I am not trying to create a bang on her. So I'm 
skimming this hair up and back instead of combing over the eyes and then scissoring over the eyes. I comb it down and scissor it back. starting to take shape. So we don't want the top knot to look like a poodle, but we do want to separate the ears from the top knot. So with the ears pushed forward, we're going to come in and just very slightly indent between the ear and the top knot. We want the ears to kind of sit higher than the top knot when they're perked up. Think actual teddy bear. Being very careful in your cuts here. One wrong cut can ruin the look. Now I'm going to edge out around the ears. I want them round. I'm getting them quite short at the ends. Being very careful not to cut the end of the ear. Find the end of the ear with your thumb and forefinger make sure that you have that protected now i'm going to use my zolita curved blending shears I'm going to take the ear and roll it over my fingers with my blending shear i'm going to blend this up and round it and make it very plush having complete control over where my shears are going and where the edges of the ear are Repeat the process on this side. Take the end of the ear, roll it over my fingers, roll it down, and then blend. Good girl. All right, shake it. And here you go. Shake it out. I'm taking the tail and putting it over her back and then checking for anything falling off the back end of the dog hair. Wanna make sure this is trimmed up nice. Good girl, Sophie. Thank you for watching, guys. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you don't miss a single upload. See you next time, guys. Bye. Yay. Yay, is it